Let's talk about another way of doing external marketing, and that is through the dental implant lecture. Now, I've gone hot and cold with dental implant lectures, but that's the way of advertising. You know, there's sometimes the things work and sometimes the things don't. But more often, there's some things that we can do to make things better and not just give up on a campaign. So the dental implant lecture series we're doing right now has become very popular. And uh, here are some of the changes. Well, let's talk about the changes. So let's talk about what we're doing first. Number one, we're advertising to the public. Um, in our case, that's as a result of a newspaper ad. Yeah, a real newspaper. It actually goes into the newspaper. Why? Because that happens to be, at least at this point, um, in 2017 or 2018, that happens to be the demographic of the patient that we want to attract. That won't be around forever. You know, as we go to more and more digital media, the importance of being in the newspaper isn't going to be the same, but right now it is. And so we run a newspaper ad that essentially attracts um, a patient. And the headline is, it has to be a killer headline. And in this case, it's missing multiple teeth. And, um, uh, and, and that actually is an ad that we've been running for a while. We actually got it from Scott Westermeyer, who runs a dental implant lecture um, um, program in order to be able to help you to, to run your own dental implant lecture series. Uh, and it's very good. But we needed to tweak it for our own personal area. Example. We would run this ad, and we'd see patients at 12 noon or 1 o'clock, something like that. Um, and we would attract a certain patient. After a while, the number of patients that we had dwindled down quite a bit. Um, so that we were seeing three, four people, which is fine as, as if they're gonna accept treatment. I don't mind running an ad and getting, and getting some people in. Um, but, uh, it, it, you know, with three or four people, you kind of become demotivated and you kind of decide, well, maybe we don't have to do that uh, very much anymore. So what change did we make there? We made a few, didn't we? Yes, we did. We also, um, with, with the time, we, I think we got rid of, we don't have any more lunchtime ones. No, anymore. no lunchtime ones anymore, no. Yes, uh, we did change the time to evenings only, and we also started advertising with Facebook, your favorite. Yeah. Um, so, Social media, we yes. actually did that, yes. Yes, we did. So we had a lot of our staff, which we have a lot of staff, share that. Um, we also, did you do anything different as far as when you place the ad in the newspaper, or all that was the same? We're running the ad about one week before, and we have three touches. So the three ads that run before the uh, dental implant lecture, the dental implant lecture is usually on a Thursday evening, and so we try to run it on Sunday, and then Tuesday, and then Thursday. Mm -hmm. And we run that ad in the newspaper. But it was interesting. We changed the ad. Mm -hmm. We added two sentences to the ad. And one sentence says something like, and you're, you're seeing it on the screen right now, um, I'm going by memory, but are there questions that your general dentist or your dentist doesn't answer? That's featured, that wasn't there before. And then there was another sentence that says something like, find out why dental implants may not be the answer for you or something along that line. And all of a sudden we're getting, the first year we, I mean the first month we were in that, now we had 23 people yes. here. Yes, that was the and that, that was the, the highest we've ever had for dental implant lecture attendees. And we've been doing this for at least 14 years, because I've been here for 14 years, and we've never had attendance that big before. Yeah. And we had it here. We do advertise a light snack, um, and usually it's um, uh, some sandwiches or some fruit, um, water, coffee, uh, that sort of thing. Nothing big, nothing really expensive. Uh, and we don't really focus on that much at all. I don't even think we advertise it in the paper. Yeah, we do. It, we it says a light dinner will be. Okay. Yeah, and we, we've been doing Panera, I think. Right. We're going to try sushi again and see how okay. that works um, and see if that, see if that makes any difference. Right. People do not come here for the food. Nope. They don't. First of all, if they come here and we give them something that's too chewy, they may not be able to eat it anyway. They're coming here that's for right. that purpose. I know, yeah. yeah. And, and that was one thing that I, I think we did find was a fail before was we did focus on the venue. We focused on the restaurant, and we did have people come just to have dinner there. What a waste of money. It was a huge waste of money. So not focusing on that and having something that is, is light mentioned in there, most people who come don't even, don't even eat anything. They're just coming to hear the lecture. We also changed uh, the person in charge of running the lectures, which she doesn't even have a part in the lectures themselves. 
themselves, but she makes the confirmation calls and she makes sure that they're going to show up. She offers if they want to bring somebody else with them. Um, and it's Samantha and she has a very sweet tone. Um, and she's very welcoming and, um, patients just love her. So we have her making those phone calls. Um, Anything else that we did? Well, I think once um, once the per person arrives, and listen to some things right. that you know. Once the person arrives, then right. what do you say to the person? Person, and I know you're probably seeing the dental implant uh, uh, poster that's up to my what up to my right side. So you see that dental implant poster over there. Yeah, we have the poster up there, but we don't refer to it once. I think it's kind of like a curiosity, what's a dental implant? Right. We don't concentrate on what's a dental implant. Nobody cares about what a dental implant is. By now they know. When I first was doing dental implants, nobody knew what dental implants were. Okay, so we had to explain it then. But now, they don't care about the dental implants, they care about the experience that they're going to have once they have teeth. Because patients want to do what? They want to smile, they want to chew, they want to be free of pain, and they don't want their mouths to stink, okay? We know those are the four items the patients are interested in. Well, in this case, it's smiling and chewing. But if we add the additional dimension, find out why dental implants may not be the answer for you, or may not always be the best answer, that's a differentiating step. Because what they're seeing on your TV ad, or in other venues is, find out why dental implants are so fantastic. Well, they are fantastic, but if you don't need them, they're not very fantastic, you don't, you don't want to do them, and they're not the only answer for the full mouth case. Remember, you're differentiating yourself as a periodontist. Well, what's the most important thing? You differentiate yourself as a diagnostician first. Deciding whether teeth can be kept predictably or not first. It's the thinking skills that people want. I know I'm repeating myself, particularly for longtime members. The most important moment that achieved, that, that, that I noticed, or that we achieved when we started going direct to patient, and that was in 2004 where we tested out ads, was what? We discovered that there was a whole group of patients, a whole group of patients that was underserved. A whole group of patients who had given up on the dental profession because in some way they were mistreated. That's who you're marketing to. Because the bulk, and I say the bulk of the patients that are coming into our office are not patients who are in the system. They're patients who are out of the system. They're anxious, they were treated poorly, or they were misdiagnosed and mistreatment plant. Those are the patients that you're looking for. And those are the patients who need an awful lot of dental work. And with the amount of dental work that they need, it certainly makes it quite beneficial to externally market to get them. Because those patients aren't in the system. Those patients aren't going to come from your referral sources because your referral sources aren't seeing those patients either. If those patients need a lot of help, a lot of help that you can provide. And the way you show you provide it is not drilling a hole and screwing a dental implant in. The way you provide that is by showing them that you have the thinking skills and the caring skills to make sure that they're treated and they're treated correctly. And so that when you're going out to the public, yes, the people that are coming in are the same people that are spending forty dollars or $50,000 to those other people that are advertising on TV, but you're differentiating yourself because you're saying, well, maybe you don't have to spend so much money. Maybe if you're just diagnosed and treatment plan correctly, we can get you to the same point, or maybe a better point because you still have your teeth. And so when we have the patient, when they're finally here, and we're talking about what, 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 what they can do, we're not going to talk about in terms of placing a dental implant. We are talking about patient experiences what patients that you know have experienced. And one of the most prominent things that we do during that lecture is to have a picture of a patient with a portion of the success story that patient already wrote. And we've talked about how, how critical it is to get success stories because right. this is another way they can be right. used. Patients want to hear other patients' stories. They want to hear that 
they ha there is hope for their situation because a lot of patients that come feel like that uh, there's nothing else that can be done for them. And so when they do walk into this room, which is where we do the implant lectures, we do have posters, we do have models of what an implant is, we do have models of a snap indenture and a full screwed in prosthetic. We, we do have this stuff that they can see, but we don't, um, we don't focus on what an implant is, which is what we had done before. We do focus on what can be done for these particular situations, the hope they have, and focus on the stories. And um, the, all three of you guys, the doctors, talk during that lecture, right? So we do. So you guys all have all your parts, so they, they can see everything kind of coming together with that as well. Yeah, Michelle will talk about surgical guides and, and uh, again, diagnosis, what we do, how we look at a case, and how we develop a surgical guide based on um, based on occlusion as well as position of the bone and all the things you already know. Matthew will talk about the restorative part of it. And by the way, it's not so bad for you to partner with a restorative right. dentist that, you're, that you may be working with closely and let that restorative dentist come in and be part of that uh, lecture, you know, th that lecture phenomenon. It's good. Sometimes we've had patients come in and talk about their experiences. Right. Um, and then finally, um, I may come on and I'll uh, use the anatomized software and show a patient or show, show the audience and, you know, in, in real time exactly how we can take a dental implant and how we insert it into the jaw virtually, showing that on the screen. So there are a lot of things that you can do, again, to differentiate yourself and show and allow the patient to have that experience. If you're doing imaging, and I encourage everyone to do imaging, show befores and afters. Show potential afters after the befores. And you can do that at the dental implant lecture as well. Here's what we came up with, here's what we thought we would get, and here's what we ended up getting. All through imaging, because imaging is so, 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 so important. Remember, you're looking for smile, chew, free of pain, don't want your mouth to stink, and mo mostly it's smile and chew. And for smile, which is a big, big, big attraction, you, even as a periodontist, can show somebody how they can smile better as a result of the direction of care that, that you're providing. Now, the, the next webinar that we'll do, we'll, we'll actually record one of our implant lectures so you guys can see uh, exactly what, is it, what that we've done. And this comes from 14 years of doing lectures. This comes from trying other people's webinar lectures and how they do it. And we've kind of combined all of it together and put in different parts um, that we felt worked for us for the periodontal um, field. And uh, so you can see what we do. Good. We'll see you next time. We hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have any questions in regards to it, please email us. The American Association of Independent Periodontists is there to help every periodontal practice do better. I'm Dr. Lee Sheldon. And I'm Danielle Joyner. We'll see you on the next video.